Today on Beerus TV, we're gonna take another quick break from the ULM series to share the starting point of a brand new Beerus TV Investigates topic. The significantly elevated calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium levels really increase calcifying coral growth rates by 50% or more. And at the end, we're gonna give away three full sets of Red Sea's Reef Foundation program. Right off the bat, another quick call out for the financial supporters of these experiments. A huge part of why we get to explore these topics and share this type of information with you. Right with us, Worldwide Corals, Ecotech, and Neptune have invested a pretty incredible amount of time and resources to help the community find some of these answers. Their willingness to go beyond simply selling stuff and stepping up to fund the evolutionary progress within the hobby. I personally appreciate their help. If you do as well, let them know with a quick thank you in the comments or reef to reef thread. I think you goes a long way and helps all of them get these projects past their collective finance teams. So that said, reefers have been debating the perfect reef tank calcium and alkalinity level for ages. And there's a lot of variables here, but the general thought process is elevated levels will likely produce increased growth. This is most likely related to the increased alkalinity levels more than anything, which can often be increased by as much as 50% as reefers transition from more typical DKHs to as high as 12. So that seems like a decent point to test to. Reef fantasy or reef certainty, elevated major elements will result in 50% faster growth for calcifying corals. While reefers with established tanks and huge colonies may not have a lot of need for faster growth, I think this is very applicable to many reefers with newer tanks, which are often filled with tiny one-inch frags, where getting from this to this 50% faster would be considered a huge deal. Or for coral traders out there who trade corals and expand their collection, doing that 50% faster also represents a huge opportunity that might be worth attempting. The basis of what we're exploring here is a pretty easy concept, and while not universally agreed upon, there are enough people who see it this way to be a viable or even plausible theory. More or less, the corals need to remove calcium and alkalinity from the tank water, and essentially, it pumps it into their own tissue, where the levels are now much higher than the surrounding water, which allows it to precipitate out the calcium carbonate-based skeletal structure. Elevating the levels within its tissue doesn't happen on its own. The coral needs to expend metabolic energy to do this. Then, of course, as the corals precipitate out the calcium and alkalinity within its tissue, it actually has to pump more in and replace them to keep the process going. This is where the elevated levels in the tank come in. Presumably, there are a couple forces at play here that could increase growth when we increase the availability of major foundational elements, most notably that 50% increase in the availability of alkalinity. Number one being the increased availability or the higher concentration on the outside of the coral in the tank water very likely makes it easier for the coral to pump in and maintain higher levels inside the coral, meaning it doesn't have to expend as much energy to perform this metabolic function. It's also possible that the elevated levels in the tank allows the coral to more rapidly replace calcium and alkalinity it's consuming, which could result in more stable, higher levels which promote or allow for faster rates of precipitation and growth. So these are the basic theories as to why and how the elevated levels may produce beneficial growth-related results. I will note that in this experiment, we're looking at growth only and not attempting to identify if elevated levels are actually healthy for corals, which is a rather complex question to identify definitively. So regardless of the results here, there are additional angles to explore. We'll certainly note anything we see related to overall coral health and potentially try to look at it from additional experiments if this one produces positive results. One of the more common considerations with maintaining very high alkalinities is many reefers believe the corals end up calcifying and growing so fast that the new soft tissue generation may have difficulty keeping up with the skeletal growth. Something that you may be able to visually identify with issues at the new growth edges. We'll keep an eye out for this kind of thing, but it is outside of the scope here to definitively identify if this is really the cause of an issue like this. So to put this all to the test, we set up four completely separate 25-gallon test tanks, two tanks with standard levels, and two tanks with elevated levels. So we certainly hope to see redundant results and strong supporting evidence as to the theory that we're testing. To add some relevancy to the different parameter levels between the two tank sets, we base them on a couple of our most popular salt mixes with the Red Sea Blue Bucket and Black Bucket Coral Pro. Blue Bucket maintained more typical reef parameters with 430 calcium, 1280 magnesium, and a DKH of 8. 
I would say this is a pretty typical range for most reefers and what many members of the BRS team here uses. Mixed to a common salinity of 35 parts per thousand, the Black Bucket Coral Pro has significantly elevated levels appropriate for an experiment like this with 465 calcium, 1390 magnesium, and a decay of 12, which are all much higher than the average reef tank, which they claim is optimal ratio for accelerated growth. So these are two set points for our experiment of typical and elevated levels. That said, it's important to note that we're not testing one salt against another. We just thought that these represented good ranges for the experiment, both because they represent the scope of what we're exploring, as well as represent ranges for a couple of the most popular salt mixes in the industry. For those of you wondering, the Blue Bucket Red Sea is a salt that we use for all the BRS TV Investigates experiments. So the baseline here is just Blue Bucket and related parameters, and the elevated tanks are still Blue Bucket, which we've manually elevated the levels up to the desired parameters. Inside each tank is six specimens of six identical coral types for a total of 36 corals, all provided by worldwide corals. They're all dispersed well, so they receive various amounts of light, and we're measuring the growth, both by weight as well as visually. We're using the Ecotech MP10 to provide solid flow patterns coupled with Ecotech's XR15 Radeon Pro with the diffuser, running the AB Plus program at 100% intensity, using the diffuser primarily to blend the individual LED spectrums better. With the diffuser and at this depth, we should be able to largely eliminate both spectrum and PAR hotspots. Calcium and alkalinity is managed separately by dosing calcium chloride and sodium bicarbonate. We use bicarbonate because it has less of a significant impact on pH than soda ash. Trace element replenishment and nutrient export will be handed predominantly with 20% water changes twice a month. The growth and results of the test will be based on the collective weights of each group of specimens at the end of the experiment. We'll also perform a visual assessment of growth, coloration, or anything else of note, particularly those things which are consistent between the two identical tanks. So that's a high level view of what we're doing here. We'll let the experiment run as long as needed to provide the desired results, but I hope to at least have an update at the three month mark. Again, big thanks to the teams at Worldwide, Neptune and Ecotech for their help. I'm pretty excited to see how this all turns out, what we learn, and the opportunities that we can all work on in the future. If you got ideas of what you'd like to see tested, share them because I have a working list and your voices help me prioritize them. Next week, we're adding corals to the ULM tank, which is exciting. Most of you know that the Worldwide guys provided a ton of the corals for the BRS 160 and 52 Weeks of Reefing series. And these experiments, but they're also stepping up for the three ULM tanks, gonna help us with corals here as well. So huge personal thank you to Lou and Victor for helping us make these tanks and the ULM series fun for everyone following along because it's the corals which are at the heart of everything we do. Don't forget, we're giving away three of those $120 a piece Red Sea Complete Coral Packages this week. So sign up with that link in the lower left or head on over to the site, hit the Specials and Deals tab, then free stuff. As always, if you like what we're doing here, let us know with a quick thumbs up, subscribe, and then hit that little instant notification bell so you know the moment that we release all of our reefing videos. See you next week in the next episode of BRS TV.